Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. I am Vidya Shri. In this video, I am going to discuss the strategy to prepare for KSET 2023 examination in the remaining 55 to 58 days. This video is a general video on preparation for KSET 2023 examination irrespective of the subjects. Whatever the subjects that you are preparing for the KSET examination, you can watch this video. First of all, I would like to apologize for the delay in bringing this video to you. Since the examination authority has been changed from Mysore University to Karnataka Examination Authority, I wasn't sure about the syllabus for KSET 2023. So I was waiting for KEA to publish the syllabus in its official website. So yesterday, that's on 6th September 2023, KEA has published the syllabus for KSET 2023 in its official website. And today this video is before you. Now you know you have hardly 55 to 58 days for KSET 2023 examinations. And if you are an aspirant of KSET examination from a long back and you have started your preparation already and you are preparing for 2023 examination or if you are an aspirant of NET examinations in your respective subject or you have already strategized your preparation for KSA 2023 examination. You can follow these strategies which already you have planned. And if you are a person who is appearing for the KSA examination for the first time, or if you are an aspirant who has not yet started your preparation and confused from where to start, how to start, then this video is for you. So, you know, you have 55 to 58 days. So, here I'll consider that you have 55 days for your preparations. In these 55 days, in a day, minimum of 5 to 6 hours, you have to study for examination. So, minimum 5 to 6 hours daily you have to study. You might be a student or you might be working or you might be completely dedicated for exam preparation, whatever category you belong to, you must make five to six hours time in a day to prepare for your examination. And you should note that revision is another important thing that you should focus. Coming to the revision part, every day you have to revise the concepts that you have learned. So, in a day, you can keep one hour for your revision purpose. That revision time you can choose wisely. Whichever is your active time, that hour of the day, you choose it as your revision time, where you will be revising all the concepts that you have studied in that particular day. So, this revision time can be the first session of your day. If you are good at morning sessions, so first hour of the day you keep it for your revision purpose or if you study well during late night or night time whatever is your preference that one hour of a day you keep it for revision purpose so revision is one hour daily you are going to revise so this five to six hours of study that you will be doing in six days per week So remaining one day that you have Sunday, every Sunday you are going to do weekly revision. So daily one hour is for revision and every Sunday. So six days you will be studying the syllabus and Sunday you will keep it for your revision purpose. If you are bored of reading a whole unit or a single paper on a single day, then you can jump between the units or papers. This will help your preparation to a great extent. Keep in mind, if you are a person who gets confused, if you go and read a multiple units or papers on a single day, then don't go for it. If you are bored of reading single unit or single paper in a day, then you can jump or switch between the subjects or papers. Now, according to this strategy, you can plan your timetable. So each day five to six hours study is must and one hour of the day you should revise the topics that is studied. This revision that depends on your active time. 
Meanwhile, if you are bored of reading a single paper or a unit, you can switch between the papers or the units. According to this strategy, plan your own timetable. I cannot provide timetable individually. So individuals have different ability to read as well as the active time for an individual differs from one person to the other person. So according to your time, you adjust your timings and make a timetable and study accordingly. From these 55 days, in the first to 40 days, you will complete the whole syllabus. Remaining 15 days, you will use it for revision purpose. So first 40 days, you will complete the syllabus and remaining 15 days, you will revise the syllabus that you have prepared for the examination. Remember, in these 55 days, you are going to cover the syllabus for paper 1 as well as paper 2. Now, during the revision days, you can make use of the previous year question papers of your subject and you can practice answering these question papers so that you can get a clear idea on how to manage time during the exam. Now, when you make timetable, make sure that you put a timetable so as to complete the whole syllabus in the first 40 days that every five to six hours daily that you are going to prepare for your examination one hour daily revision weekly six days you are going to prepare and one day it's for revision paper one is common for every case it aspirant irrespective of your subjects my suggestion is that you can dedicate daily one hour to prepare for paper one syllabus Paper 1 syllabus has been published in the KEA official website. Now, if you look into the syllabus of paper 1, we can classify the syllabus into two parts here. One is the qualitative part. And the other is quantitative part. So, in this quantitative aspect, we come across mathematical aptitude and reasoning. Logical reasoning. Then we have data interpretation. All these topics, if you practice it daily, you can answer the questions that is given in the examination. If I speak about the qualitative aspect of paper one, we come across research aptitude, teaching aptitude, higher education system, etc. These topics are such that how much ever you prepare it for the syllabus, the questions that is coming in the examination will be quite confusing. Means whatever you study, the question that's coming, appearing in the examination might be totally different. But if you look into this quantitative aspects like mathematical aptitude and reasoning, logical reasoning or data interpretation. If you prepare for it, you can definitely answer the questions that is given in the examination. So daily one hour, you study these concepts and you just practice them. So only one thing that will help you to get good score in paper one is that daily practice. So you should practice it daily so that in the examination you can solve the quantitative parts such as mathematical aptitude reasoning, logical reasoning, data interpretation questions. Whereas with respect to the qualitative aspects, instead of referring certain textbooks, what you can do as an alternative is that you can find them through Google or you can find it from YouTube. Watch few videos related to that and from that you try practicing questions. Other than this, 
what we have in paper 1 is ICT and comprehension. So while answering comprehension questions, you should read the passage that is given and then you should answer the questions. So once if you go through the questions, you will get a clear understanding what they have asked so that once you read the passage, you can get the answer. Then coming to the ICT, you should remember certain abbreviations and they are full form and related to internet. So these ICT as well as comprehensions are also easy to score. I suggest you all to dedicate one hour daily to prepare for paper one syllabus. Rest of the hours of the day you can utilize for your preparation of your subject that is the paper two. Considering all these points, whatever I have discussed in this video, manage your time, make your own timetable and start your preparation. Even if you have not started your preparation yet, at this point of time, you can start your preparation. You can definitely clear your exam. I'll be engaging the classes for general paper as well as the chemical sciences paper for KSA 2023 through this platform. To get more updates on KSA preparation, stay connected to my channel. I hope you will find this video helpful. Kindly share the video among your family and friends. Please do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to press the bell icon to get notified about the upcoming videos. I'll meet you in my next video with a new topic. Stay connected. Keep learning. Take care. Bye-bye.